six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here. We're out with the Kubota K008 excavator. Mini, mini excavator, or as my wife would say, cute. Uh, we're gonna take a quick walk around this machine here, take a look at it and see if it's something that might be right for your application. So the application for this machine is quite obviously not to move mountains, right? This is a small excavator. Uh, it only has about a six foot dig depth. Its strengths and capacities and speeds feel very much like the backhoe in a Kubota BX series tractor loader backhoe machine. Um, the guys that we tend to sell this to are really into two main applications. Um, one, you'll frequently find these at rental yards for small rental applications because they only weigh 2,200 pounds. They could be put on a little 3,000 pound trailer and towed around by just about anybody with small chores to do in their backyard, right? It's, it's weight and size makes it very appealing as a, a do-all tool. Um, the second application tends to be interior demolition, actually. Um, this thing, with its tracks pulled the whole way in, is able to drive through a 28-inch door. And equipped with a hammer down here on the end, it can be used for all kinds of interior concrete demolition or heavy-duty tasks that will be really hard on an individual guy to do with, say, an air jack hammer or something like that. Um, so, uh, rental applications, interior demolition, um, and an occasional pool contractor sometimes, um, or electrical contractor, where guys really only need to dig three, four feet to get below the frost line. Um, this becomes a really portable, nice package for those kinds of guys to use. So, certainly not a Haas, right? We're, we're not digging foundations, we're not digging pools or something like this, but there's a lot of small utility trenching applications where a small machine like this can be useful. Like I said, this is about a six foot digging depth machine and it's real sweet spot for working ranges is between four and five feet. Um, when you start to get down to some of the limits of some of these excavators, you're gonna have a hard time working productively. So with a dipper the size of this, you're usually working in the four to five foot range. The buckets on this are good heavy buckets. If you look at the gauge of the steel, the replaceable teeth, they didn't chintz out here because this is a light machine, right? It's good, heavy, solid buckets. Um, when we move across the bottom here, you'll see this machine does have a small push blade on the front. This is able to exceed about 2,000 pounds of pushing force in order to push fill and stuff back into trenches. So you can backfill with this blade, although you're not going to do any kind of grading work or light grading like you could with a large excavator. You'll see here on the blade that the ends here, the wings are actually able to swing backwards. And that's because, as I mentioned before, these tracks are actually adjustable. The tracks will move in and out in order to get through some of those tight, tight doorways, but can come out again to give you the stability. And because you never want your blade to be more narrow than what your tracks are, uh, you can swing the wings in here on the end in order to make sure that you maintain that tight uh, distance across the machine. If we flip the seat up here, uh, you'll notice the engine is contained right here underneath the seat. Uh, this has a little 10 horsepower, it's all it takes, uh, Kubota diesel, D722. So it's right about three quarters of a liter. Uh, you'll notice here as far as serviceability goes, all the bits and pieces that you need to get to are located right here at the top of the engine. So diesel fuel fills, air cleaner, uh, radiator overflow, fuel filters, oil filters, um, if you even had to go so far as to replace an alternator or a starter or anything, everything is accessible right here at the top of the engine. So a very, very easy machine as far as serviceability goes. To me, the most fun and unique feature on this thing is the adjustable tracks. So in order to make those tracks go in and out, we're first going to start the machine up, put our seatbelt on because we are always concerned about safety. Safety is number one. Now we're gonna take the blade here, lower the blade down and pick the front of the machine up in the air. And put your bucket down on the ground and use this end to pick the rest of the machine up in the air. So now once the whole thing is raised up in the air, there's a lever down here on the floor that you can use to divert the function from the front blade to the track adjustment. So now with that lever flipped, I can reach up here and take the control that would have worked my blade and take my tracks and push my tracks out for added stability. Or if I'm going into that interior de demolition scenario, I can now take this and pull my tracks back in again. This is also a handy setup too if you need to go and change your tracks for some reason. Um, you can do this on all excavators, obviously. The whole machine can pop right up in the air 
making it really easy to service if you, you have to replace a track for some reason. So does it dig? Uh, obviously we can give it a go here, right? So we can take the RPMs of the machine here and raise them up so that we get some good speed out of the machine. And then I very openly am not a professional operator, right? If you uh, ever watch somebody on an excavator that really knows what they're doing, you can have a very quick respect for what they do. Um, the guys that really get to spend day in and day out on this kind of stuff learn a finesse and a speed and a, a precision that guys like myself who know how they work and can get in on and off periodically just never can develop. But you can see here from my clunky flying around with this thing, uh, it very much can dig. Um, we in Pennsylvania tend to be able to go a couple feet here before we're going to get down to some rocky shaley, tough stuff. But I could throw this around pretty quickly. One thing that we're going to do a video on later is how to position your blade when you're using an excavator. Um, what I am doing now, if you look at my, my push blade, I have my push blade behind me. And by using that blade behind me when I'm pulling the dipper in, it, uh, it keeps me from pushing the front of the machine up in the air while I'm digging down into the ground. So you can get a lot of stability out of an excavator depending on exactly how you position your blade, whether it's uh, wedging yourself down so that you don't push up in the air when you dig or uh, keeping yourself from tipping over backwards if you're going up on a trailer. Or going up a hill. If you've not run a backhoe or an excavator before, the, uh, the bucket is always the part of the excavator that has the most strength. Um, in this case, the breakout force of the bucket is about double that of the boom. So I use the boom to position the bucket where I want it and then curl the bucket in order to break loose the dirt and fill it with soil. Uh, and then use the boom in order to crane up and out. So the, the bucket being that it's the smaller pivot on the machine is uh, quite a bit more powerful than what the boom is. So like I said, you can see how I'm going here. I'm comfortably below the frost line now. So if I was out trenching for electric or putting in pipes for a pool or uh, doing light landscaping work, bushes and that kind of stuff, you know, great machine for that. Easy to get around, uh, productive enough to work with, but you know, still, it has its limitations like any machine, right? It's not a full-size excavator, but its capacities, its weight, its productivity, uh, make it a popular choice for a lot of applications. And while you don't sell as many of these as what you do full-size excavators, I mean, certainly they're their sales are quite a lot lower than, say, a, a 10, 12,000 pound machine. Um, they definitely have their niche. And, you know, if you watch the trailers around here, it's not infrequent that you see somebody pulling one of these things around to go do some jobs with. So that's a Kubota K88-3 mini mini excavator. If we could help you with a machine like this, if you happen to have an application that could demand one, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.